Well, science, or more accurately, the scientific method, is clearly the most successful approach ever devised to understand the physical world. It's worth remembering that absolute certainty is never possible, although some things are, are more certain than others. For instance, while we're incredibly confident that the Earth isn't flat and that cigarettes are extremely bad for you, researchers like my colleagues and I are used to encountering ideas and claims that are far less solid. It's entirely normal for discoveries to appear and disappear and, and sometimes reappear again. A recent announcement by an experiment at the LHC has the potential to have this elusive character. This interesting story involves a subject called a pentaquark. A pentaquark is a particle containing five quarks, or more accurately, four quarks and an antimatter quark. A particle with these properties might have been discovered. However, to understand this claim a bit better, we need to remind ourselves about the theory of quarks and what we know about them. Quarks are particles found inside protons and neutrons. They were independently proposed in 1964 by George Zweig and Murray Gilman. While Zweig called these particles aces, it's Gilman's label that is stuck when he used a word from a phrase from James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. Over the last half a century, we've, we've discovered six types of quarks. They're called up and down, charm and strange, and top and bottom. Up and down quarks are those that are found inside protons and neutrons, and the others are made in collisions using particle accelerators like the LHC. Quarks have been observed to combine in only a few different configurations. For instance, one configuration is when three quarks combine to make a particle of a class called a baryon, while the other common configuration is when a quark and an antimatter quark combine to make a class of a particle called a meson. Baryons and mesons are very common. For instance, protons and neutrons are examples of baryons, and the most commonly produced particle in one of our big accelerators is a pi meson. If you add up all the baryons and mesons we've discovered, the number is far more than 100. The reason that quarks arrange themselves into groups of three or a matter-antimatter pair originates in the fact that they carry a kind of charge called the strong nuclear charge, or what physicists call color. You should be aware that we're using this word rather loosely as it's only an analogy. In the same way that if we add red, green, and blue, we get white, if we add the three quark charges, we get a particle with no strong charge. Similarly, antiquarks have an opposite charge, so a quark and an antimatter quark can cancel out and make a particle with no strong charge. However, there are other predicted configurations of quarks that have resisted discovery so far. One option is to have two quarks and two antimatter quarks, what we call a tetraquark. And another is to have four quarks and an antimatter quark, and that is called a pentaquark. Claims of the discovery of pentaquarks have surfaced before. For instance, in 2002, scientists claimed that they'd found a pentaquark consisting of two up quarks, two down quarks, and a strange antiquark. They called this particle a theta plus. With the announcement of the theta plus, other scientists dug through their data and found other objects that were other possible pentaquarks. On the other hand, other scientists dug through different data and, and found nothing. It was an exciting couple of years, until 2005, when physicists at the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility in Newport News, Virginia, repeated the original measurement with far more data and found no evidence for the theta plus. Pentaquarks appeared to have been a subatomic will-o'-the-wisp. Now, I don't wish to be critical of the scientists involved in this incident. It's how science is done on the edge of knowledge. Further, it's an important point that while scientists made the initial announcement, other scientists provided the definitive measurement that killed the initial claim. Perhaps even more important is that the original scientists accepted that their claim had been refuted. Science worked the way it was supposed to. So what about these new pentaquark claims? Well, the LHC-B experiment has announced evidence that they believe supports a pentaquark with two up quarks, a down quark, a charm quark, and an antimatter charm quark. Actually, they claim that they found two different kinds of pentaquarks. I think it's important to say that the measurement didn't start out as a search for pentaquarks. In fact, they were studying a heavy baryon called the lambda sub b in an effort to measure its lifetime. They were looking for a specific manner in which it decayed, specifically into a charged K meson, a proton, and another meson called a J psi. 
This is all fairly garden variety stuff, although it requires a top-notch detector to do it. Just like any good, careful scientist, they looked over the data to make sure that it all hung together and that it couldn't have occurred by accident. They looked at the angles at which the particles came out and their energies. They mathematically combined the energies and the momenta of the particles to see if it made sense, and this was when the surprise began. They found, when they looked at the proton and the JPSI meson, that the data showed unexpected features. There were bumps in the data. So, in particle physics, bumps are interesting. They can mean a discovery. So they looked harder at them. After a ton of work, they concluded that it looked like an unexpected particle was being produced. Well, two, actually. They compared the properties of the new particle to all of the hundreds of known mesons and baryons and found no matches. That was when things began to be a bit more exciting. While I'm not a member of that experiment and wasn't part of the closed-door conversations, I'm 100% certain that the level of critical discussion was very, very high. In the end, the researchers announced that the new data looked like a possible pair of pentaquarks. So, how should you view this announcement? First, you should realize that the scientists involved are world-class. This isn't some announcement from a couple of amateurs. Further, they are keenly aware of the history of pentaquarks, and I'm totally sure that their internal discussion and cross-checks were thorough. This is an announcement that must be taken seriously. There are a couple of questions that need to be answered. The first question is, did they find two new particles? Here, the situation is on stronger ground. The size of the bumps are big, and big bumps means more certain. Scientists define a measurement of their certainty called the significance, where more significance means more certain. The minimum significance for discovery is 5, and the two new particles have a significance of 9 and 12, respectively. It really does look like LHCb found something. But are they pentaquarks? That's a bit harder. Further, there are two different kinds of configurations that could exist. One is what I might call a true pentaquark, which is when all four quarks and one antiquark are all jumbled together in a single bag, so to speak. However, another possibility is what we might call a nuclear molecule, although that terminology can be confusing. In the molecule case, a JPSI meson and a proton were made, but they were made stuck together, like two marbles connected with Velcro. Either configuration is possible, and the data does not yet pick one over the other. A troubling question is the fact that the LHCb pentaquark candidates are super heavy because they contain charm quarks. Why are there not lighter pentaquarks? Is it because charm pentaquarks are easier to make, or are they more stable? Nobody really knows, although the scientific community is mulling over the possibilities. Finally, there is the question of confirmation. The LHCb collaboration is an excellent group of people, no doubt about that, but reputation is not enough in research. The rest of the community must be skeptical and, in the words of President Reagan, trust but verify. <laughs> Have other experiments confirmed the announcement? The answer to that question is not yet, but they're definitely looking. The situation remains uncertain, but it won't be for long. That's the beauty of science. We don't know the answer to all questions, but this is one question for which the answer will become clear in the next months and possibly a year or two. And when we know, we'll let you know.